Aquaba brothers and sisters, the officers and members of the Shrines of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church invites you to worship with us as we celebrate 68 years of a revolutionary legacy that our church and movement has built over the years. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy service to the Black community, 68 years of programming for liberation to build a Black nation, 68 years of determining and defining who we are and what our future and culture will be, 68 years of laying the groundwork for future generations, 68 years of waking up our people, calling them to action to build a better life, 68 years of community development and empowerment. 68 years of teaching we are an African people and that civilization, religion, and science began in Africa. 68 years of declaring that Jesus was a Black Messiah engaged in a revolutionary movement to bring his people to be their best selves. I say to you that you are sons and daughters of God. This is Founders Day where we celebrate the sacrifices and groundwork laid by those who have gone before us. Be encouraged today. You're in the right place at the right time. 
as we receive a powerful word from the presiding bishop, Jeremoji Menali Kimathi. Again, welcome. Now let us extend our hands for our prayer of invocation. Almighty God, we thank you for this gift of life we've received today. We stand in union with your presence and seek your guidance in every aspect of our life's journey. Help us to be open and submission to your will. Bless this service and all who have gathered to be strengthened by the message. Grant us this victory and success as we continue our mission to build a Pan-African world community with power, dignity, and love. We pray in the name of the revolutionary example, Jesus, we say amen and ashe. Christian Nationalist Creed. I believe 
that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. God's creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe, in the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage, in the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free, and in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the African nation Israel and to liberate African people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnant of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and program of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. now pray together in faith for those who are in need. Almighty God, our creator, we live, move, and have our being in you. We proclaim that you are a healer, sustainer, and provider. We ask for an abundant blessing and healing on those who are sick, mind, body, and spirit. We pray for our people everywhere. Let your divine power touch us right here and right now. 
Comfort those who have lost loved ones with your perfect love. Grant your favor and blessings to all who call on you in faith. Let your comfort and your presence be felt by everyone. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus, our revolutionary Black Messiah. We say amen and ash. to be moved, the Lord which keepeth me, he will not slumber nor sleep, for the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand.
morning, brothers and sisters. Our anniversary month this year comes at a time unlike any time we've ever experienced. We're in the midst of a global pandemic that has killed more people than a war. There's 13 known variants out there. There is much fear, confusion, misinformation, and ignorant defiance. Nobody really knows how this is gonna turn out. At the same time, white people are having a nervous breakdown over the rapid browning of America and the perceived threat to white supremacy. Insecure white people are always dangerous. And that's why the FBI has declared white supremacists domestic terrorists as the number one threat to America's security. That's also why Republican state legislatures across the country are hurriedly passing laws that suppress our votes, undermine, demo undermine democracy, and lay the foundation for white minority control of the government. At the same time, the bill for global warming has come undue. Half the country is wet and flooded, the other half is dry and on fire. And it seems like hurricanes have become a weekly occurrence. And then down on the Mexican border, we saw border agents on horseback whipping Haitian refugees like slaves on a cotton plantation, epigenetically traumatizing Black people across the diaspora. And here we are talking about celebrating. Also, this anniversary month comes at a sad time. Over the past year, we have buried more members, family, and friends than at any time in our lives. The sheer number of people we have lost is staggering. A lot of the people we've lost are people that we have known for a very long time. They shared our lives. I can still see their youthful faces, wide-eyed, energetic, with big afros and bell-bottom pants, sitting on the steps in front of Shrine One, daring the dream that we could change the world for Black people. So it is a sad time. Yet even in the midst of all this, here we are talking about celebrating, celebrating our anniversary, celebrating our revolutionary legacy. Now, I want to explain why that is one of the most important things that we can do. In our scripture, Israel faced a similar ordeal. Their country was invaded, the temple had been destroyed, their leading citizens had been enslaved and transported to Babylon. They worked for the Babylonians and lived in total humiliation for years. One day, Nehemiah, who was a servant to the king of Babylon, overheard some travelers talking about the deplorable conditions back in Jerusalem. He became so depressed that it showed on his face when he was serving the king. The king granted him permission to go back to Jerusalem. He gave him money and supplies and allowed him to take anyone willing to go back with him. When they arrived, they found the once beautiful city of their memory in ruins. The walls torn down, the temple burnt down, and the people living there, living in squalor and totally demoralized. The Bible says Nehemiah surveyed the damage and cried in private. And then he gathered the people together and told them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Let us rise up and build so that we might suffer this indignity no longer. They began rebuilding, rebuilding the walls so the city would be safe. They had enemies that didn't want the city rebuilt. So they had to work with a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. But finally, after much toil and controversy, they rebuilt the walls. Now it was time to turn their attention to the temple. But before they started, Nehemiah called for a celebration. The priest began reading scripture aloud on the site of the ruined temple. The people didn't feel like celebrating and began to cry. They had so much to do. Nehemiah then said, this day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, do not mourn or weep, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Another way to say that is your trust in God is your strength. Nehemiah knew there was still a lot to do. 
The people knew there was a lot to do. They knew they were a long way from where they wanted to be. They had rebuilt the walls, but they still had to rebuild the temple. The rest of the city still had to be rebuilt. Their sense of pride and dignity had to be rebuilt. The nation still had to be rebuilt. But Nehemiah said, yeah, there's a lot to do, but we need to stop and celebrate what God has done already. We need to stop and take inventory of all that we have accomplished. See, Nehemiah knew that if they didn't stop and celebrate what they had already done, they would never find the faith, inspiration, and determination to finish what they had started. They needed a celebration to get the proper perspective on their situation. Today, we are talking about celebrating our revolutionary legacy for the same reason. This is our 68th anniversary, and that is really a big deal. Every other group that originated out of the Black consciousness period is gone. We are the one remaining expression of Black people's struggle for full humanity and self-determination from that era. For 68 years, we've been committed to the liberation of Black people through programmatic action rather than protest or blind rage. For 68 years, we have worked to build a different kind of church, one that could provide a spiritual foundation to Black people's struggle for freedom. For 68 years, we've worked to develop a psycho-spiritual process to heal Black people from post-traumatic slavery syndrome, from, with, from the BCN group process to the science of cool to best self theology. For 68 years, we've been walking against the wind, swimming against the tide, going against the grain, rowing against the current, and running uphill. For 68 years, our members have shown all manner of heroism, commitment, faith, discipline, genius, generosity, sacrifice, grit, and determination. Today, we are the culmination of all that effort and all that faith by all those people for all those years. We should celebrate what God has done through us already, and we should make a big deal out of it. But Black people are challenged when it comes to this kind of celebration. Slavery not only stripped, stripped us of our history and culture, it also stripped us of our ancestral celebrations. We have forgotten their power. Every culture has these uplifting celebrations, but black people in America have no occasions in which we celebrate milestones, heroes, breakthroughs, accomplishments that made a difference to us as a people. Instead, we've adopted our oppressors' celebrations. We inherited Christmas, Christmas and Easter from the Christian tradition and Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, and Thanksgiving out of the American tradition. They have nothing to do with the Black experience, and they do nothing to our sense of pride or direction as a people. Only recently have we begun to observe Martin Luther King Day, Kwanzaa, Juneteenth, and Black History Month. We observe them, but we really don't celebrate them. There are no decorations, fireworks, parades, parties, or family gatherings for these occasions, we just observe them. We don't make a big deal out of them. So year after year, we miss the opportunity to enjoy the affirmation and direction and healing they could potentially bring to our people. My friend, the late Dr. Asa Heery, highlighted this problem and its implications. He said, we do not have sufficient monuments and celebrations to highlight important experiences and to shape our directions. These things offer us opportunity to be reflective of who we are, what we stand for, and to develop a better vision of our collective future. We need to have celebrations, holidays, monuments, and commemorations that reinforce our sense of who we are, what we believe in, serve our interests, reinforce our values, and provide inspiration to those that share our struggle. Failure to do that is to allow white monuments and celebrations to continue to impart values to our children, even from the grave.
This is why it is important that we celebrate our revolutionary legacy. A legacy is something that you hand down, something that you build and leave behind, that has lasting impact, impact and benefit beyond your mortality. It's hard to see a legacy. It's hard to see your legacy when you're living from day to day, going about your daily business. To see a legacy, we have to change our perspective. It's like at a funeral. At a funeral, you're not looking at the mundane aspects of a person's life, what they look like, what clothes they wore, what they like to eat, what their breath smelled like, how they wore their hair, what movies they liked, where they worked, or any of their odd idiosyncrasies. You change your perspective and think of deeper things, what their life meant, how was it a blessing to others, who did they help? What difference did they make? How did they leave a lasting impact? And upon realizing what their life meant, you leave with a deep, much deeper appreciation of the person than you had when they were walking around. But now they're dead and you don't get a chance to share your newfound appreciation with them. This is why we should make a practice of showing people their legacy while they're still living. This is what God did for Moses when God told Moses that he wouldn't be going into the promised land. Moses was devastated. He felt that he had somehow been a disappointment or worse, a failure in his service to God. In the moment, he couldn't see or appreciate his legacy. He had to change his perspective. So God told him to go up to the mountaintop. And the Bible says on the mountaintop, he looked into the promised land and the Lord showed him the whole land by changing, by elevating his vantage point. Moses could see what his life meant, what he had made possible, the impact that it would leave and the blessing that it would be for his people forever. God was showing him his legacy. Today, God is trying to show us our legacy. The Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church has a revolutionary legacy, one that is much more profound than we tend to appreciate while we are going about our daily business. But if we want to see that legacy, we have to change our perspective. We're going to have to view it from a higher vantage point, higher than our everyday concerns, higher than our challenges, our worries, our mistakes, our regrets, our disappointments, our heartbreaks, our disagreements, or our failures. We have to climb high enough where only what we've done remains to be seen. Now we can see the big picture, the role that we have played in the divine process to liberate black people. We can see how a little church with a few well-meaning people have had a gigantic effect on the trajectory of black people's consciousness. We can see how by walking out of St. Mark's Church, in 1953, that we escaped the straitjacket of traditional Christianity and embarked on a remarkable journey of Black self-discovery. We can see how we have proven that the church could be more than a launching pad to heaven and could give us, a, and could give us new strength for our earthly battles. We can see how God revealed through us a new theology that affirmed our Blackness celebrated our African heritage, retrieved our history, and reminded us of who we already are. We can see how God gave us the audacity to unveil a Black Madonna and to preach a Black Messiah. A move once steeped in controversy and rejected as heresy has now become commonplace throughout the world. We did that. That's our legacy from this mountaintop view. We can see how in the 1960s, we successfully forced Detroit public school system to bring about equal distribution of resources, hiring of black principals, community control of the schools, and the establishment of the first black studies program in the country. We can see how we helped end the reign of terror where white racist police killed and brutalized black people in the city of Detroit. We didn't slow it down, we ended it. We can see 
how our pioneering political organizing efforts proved that black people can fight successfully for control of our communities and helped elect the first black mayors of Detroit, Atlanta, Chicago, and Houston. We did that. That is our legacy. From the divine vantage point, we can see how the Shrine of the Black Madonna Culture Centers provided a place for Black artists, authors, poets, activists, intellectuals, and musicians enlightened Black people with their creative genius. And, be and it became the largest Black bookstore chain in the country. We can see how God used our culture centers to awaken the consciousness of a generation, reconnecting our people to our glorious past and inspiring countless many to believe we could work toward a better future. We did that. That's our legacy. From this elevated mountaintop vantage point, we can see how we created black institutions to serve the interests of black people, law centers, training centers, youth centers, technological centers, aquaba centers, meditation centers, community service centers, and health clinics. We can see how we consistently provided disaster relief uh, every time there was a flood or a hurricane to black people. We can see how we continue to provide food to hungry people every week through free food giveaways. We can see how God gave us a dream of a land called Beulah and how we worked for it poured it faithfully for 20 years until it became a reality. Today, we own the largest Black-owned farm in America on land worked by our ancestors as slaves. And ever since we got it, white people have been trying to steal it, sabotage it, and drive it into foreclosure. But today, here we are, debt-free with unlimited potential. We did that. That is our legacy. From the divine vantage point, we can see how our revolutionary legacy crossed back across the waters and went home to our motherland Africa, where we now have operations in Liberia and Nigeria. And you can tell the rest of Africa that we're on our way. We can see how when COVID separated us by distance, the virtual village made it possible for us to stay safe and still worship, meet, organize, and carry out our program. And now that our broadcast is reaching people everywhere, we are establishing a new internet church, Shrine Online, to minister to members separated by distance. It to be pastored by Reverend Amber Duile and Reverend Wamuriro. When we look back from the elevated perspective, we see the hearts we've touched, the minds we've changed, the hope we inspire, the faith we nurture, the children we raise, the opportunities we provided, the second chances we've given, and the general curses we have broken, and the services that we have rendered. This is our revolutionary legacy, and we have much to be proud of. And if we all die tonight, as long as our story is told, the legacy of the Shrine of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church will still be out there touching people, inspiring people, guiding people, encouraging people for generations to come. We don't know who our legacy might touch in the future. We don't know who it might touch, but we know this, anybody touched by our legacy becomes a part of our revolutionary legacy too. You see, legacy is spiritual and it is eternal. Like a pebble dropped in the lake creates ripples going out in concentric circles across the water. Legacy ripples. It continues to ripple across space and time as long as our story is told. I know these are difficult times. I know we still have so much to do. We still have all kinds of challenges and problems. But right now, today, we need to stop and celebrate what God has allowed us to do already. We need to stop and say thank you, hallelujah, praise God, good job. Stop focusing on the dumb stuff and focus on the good stuff we accomplished together. Stop complaining about what we don't have and thank God for what we do have. Stop obsessing over what we need to do and spend some time telling the story of what we've done already. Tell the story. And if you don't know the story, ask somebody. 
what we have accomplished in the last 68 years would be inconceivable to those bold pioneers that walked out of St. Mark's Church in 1953. And what we will accomplish in the next 68 years is inconceivable to us today. Just know this, where whatever we accomplish, it will be determined by our ability to stop every now and then and celebrate what God has done through us already. Amen and I share. Prime family, friends, supporters and followers, Houston, Atlanta, Detroit, South Carolina, or wherever you are across the country, October marks the 68th year of our mission to transform the powerless existence of African people across the diaspora and to build the institutional mechanism necessary to empower ourselves economically, socially, and politically. What has kept us on this path for over six decades has been our faith in the Most High and our long legacy of selfless service, hard work, and sacrifice. During this anniversary month, 2021, we express our sincerest gratitude for all of our faithful members who have consistently, even throughout this ongoing pandemic, contributed sacrificially to the liberation struggle, ensuring our program and movement continues beyond our lifetime. We would not be here today if we had not inherited a legacy of sacrifice from our ancestors. So we owe it to them to invest in ourselves to ensure that we have something of value to pass on to the next generation. Our beloved founder, the Honorable Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman, taught us many reigns ago that we cannot build a Black nation without voluntary taxation. With this in mind, we ask that each and every member, supporter, follower, and friend honor our anniversary by giving, no matter how large or small, over and above your regular tithes at any time during the month. You may contribute online through PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, or direct deposit at any time on any day, regardless of the time of our local recorded stream. So we look forward to 68 more years of work and struggle and sacrifice. And we look forward to you continuing to support our efforts to build a Black nation with power. Ashe. And I'm in. Let's continue with coffee, community, and conversation at our virtual coffee hour right after today's service. We'd love to meet, greet, and get to know you. Join us via Zoom, meeting ID 856 196 31208, phone ID 346 248 7799. Get to know your Pan African world community virtually at our virtual coffee hour coming up next via Zoom. Thank you again for joining us today. It is our hope that you have been inspired and motivated by the powerful message today. We cordially invite you to come again and tell your friends and family also to tune in with us. Remember, we are each charged with a mission and purpose in our lives. We ask that you do your part and leave the best legacy that you can. Again, we are sons and daughters of God. So have a great week moving forward in faith and love. Now let us extend our hands for a prayer of benediction. Oh, great God of our ancestors, as we lead, we ask that you keep us unified in the bonds of love, fellowship, and mutual commitment to improve the lives of our people. Let us seek your power daily to become all that you would have us to be. Let your love and power continue to be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen and us. Oh,